Hey everybody, we hope you're having a good week. Uh, this week we have a new episode. This features Kat Soper of Palm and Pine Yoga. Um, and they do more than yoga. Um, it's quite the impressive idea in terms of getting away, uh, connecting with yourself, doing a little bit of re some retreats along the way. But it is something pretty cool. So we recommend checking that out. A couple updates. Um, as always, if you sign up for the TAT newsletter, we will get you... The core video uh, brought to you by Dr. Kyle and his wife, Dr. Erica. Also coming up in the next couple of weeks, the CrossFit Games come to Wisconsin. And we will be down in Madison for a couple of days checking that out. So be sure to check back. We'll try and get a ton of live video, put a bunch of pictures up, and also have some great episodes lined up, which will be super fun to put out and get everybody to check out. So without further ado, we present Kat Soper. Well, uh, welcome to the next episode of Clinically Pressed. We're here at Studio 16 in Onalaska with Kat Soper. Hello. Master of all. <laughs> and um, Kat is a yoga instructor mm -hmm. and uh, a mindfulness master, would you say? Or how, I would have put you the word it? master in there, a mindfulness um, geek. Oh, and yeah, I, there you go. I'm really excited about the topic, I guess. Yeah. Yes. And I feel like you you know much about it. And then what else? How would else you describe yourself? Or what would you say you do? Um, so yoga instructor, yoga student, first and foremost. Um, I guess I'd say a coach and that I do work with people on stuff beyond just yoga and working with nutrition and mindset as well. Um Puppy mama. I have two dogs that I very much love. Nice. Um, I have a wonderful husband that I also very much love. Um, outdoors, I like to read, that kind of stuff. But yoga and um, just health and healing and wellness, I would say, is where my professional interests lie. Awesome. Yeah. Do I talk? All in a nutshell. No, you're good. Oh, okay. you're, you're totally good. <laughs> so, um, how long have you been? The yoga instructor. Started there. Um, so I got my first certification 200 hours over five years ago in Minneapolis uh, with Core Power Yoga. Okay. Heard of it. Nope, I have not. Yeah. So, Don't know anything about it, but heard of it. <laughs> heard of it. I know the name. So they um, have locations throughout the U.S. and their background is Power Yoga. And it was a great foundation, 100%. Um, and since then, my teaching has definitely evolved. But that's when I started. Gotcha. Yeah. And then you went from there to San Diego, is that correct? Or where did your path go? Past zigzags <clears throat> all over. Um, <laughs> so I did my training in Minneapolis when my husband and I were still living there. But he, at the same time, had a job in Wausau, Wisconsin. And was commuting back and forth, which is not a short commute. Like, yeah, how yeah. Was that? So it got to a point where one of us had to leave our job. And um, so I said that I would leave my job, which was like a little hard because I was a city girl too and moving to Wausau, mm -hmm. which I definitely loved him enough to do that. <laughs> um, <Sounds familiar. laughs> so uh, where was I? So I did the teacher training in Minneapolis, wrapped up the 200 hours. The night that I finished, we moved to Wausau, like literally that night. Oh, well. Yeah. Um, so living in Wausau, I got a job at the United Way and was just teaching at the Y. My first class was in, in the pool area, so I had to like teach on the diving board or around <laughs> that. And I was like... This is not only my first class, which is scary, but also this is not your typical <laughs> yeah. room. So I'm like, I don't know where to queue. It was interesting, but everyone survived. We didn't fall into the pool. That was okay. Nice. And um, we were there for about a year. I 
started the idea of creating my own business. It was called Aero Yoga and was just teaching classes at one of my friend's ballet studios and uh-huh. turned up the heat a little bit. And that was fun. We got going. But um, Luke and I were only 24 at this point. And so the idea of living somewhere else was very appealing um, before we had kids and other responsibilities and stuff like that. So we both started looking at different cities. We looked at Austin. We looked at San Diego. We looked at Portland. We looked at uh, Boulder. And San Diego had the three Bs, which are the beach, burritos, and beers. Nice. (laughs) That was a group decision. So we decided on San Diego, and we sold our two houses. Luke left his job, I left my job, and then we moved to San Diego. And so we were there for three years. I was fortunate enough um, six months in to get a job as the assistant studio manager at a studio that I was teaching at, Yoga 6. And um, about a month or two later, the studio manager had some family stuff, had to leave, I somehow talked my way into that role, which was retarded because it was a (laughs) lot more responsibility than I thought I was going to be. And I was there for two, two and a half years. So, and then moved here in July. So, yeah, that's a full story. But while in San Diego, um, I do believe everything happens for a reason. And I got to learn from a lot of great instructors out there. Um, Definitely different styles than what my original training was in. Um, Vinyasa, Tantra, Yin Yoga, Ashtanga Yoga. Um, And I feel very fortunate to have like little bits and pieces from everyone that I was with. So what's your favorite to practice A and teach B? Favorite to practice depends on the day. (laughs) <laughs> and you might have to explain to us what those types mean because yeah. the, the things you just fired up. The only one I've yeah. heard of is vinyasa because yeah. yeah. kicked our butt <laughs> at the time we did it. Yeah, I'll have to get you in for a class time. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, um, I'll kick your butt, but in a loving and support. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that, yeah. <laughs> I promise that. Um, Add another lake to Wisconsin. You what? I had another lake to Wisconsin with the pool of sweat. The sweat? Did you do hot yoga? Yeah, yeah. It makes a difference. (laughs) Especially, was that your first time doing yoga? A full, like, hour-long class, yeah. Okay. So, So I I started with hot yoga, too, but I kind of see how it can be extra overwhelming, because when you're like... Where am I supposed to be moving? What's going on? Mm-hmm. What pose is that? And then you add in the heat that it can just cause for a lot of overwhelm. <laughs> and I feel like you're not um, a lover of the heat. A lot no, of I think about that. being hot and I start yeah. it does. Yeah, it doesn't take much. No. You get that upper forehead glisten going. <laughs> um, well, I, right now, I just teach um, in, like, room temperature stuff, but... I'd say my favorite to take 70% of the time is vinyasa, which means linking your breath to movement in an intentional way. Um, And so my style, you might experience, Kyle, you can speak to that because you come to class, Mm -hmm. is there are types of yoga where you do pose, you go through it, and then you pause, and then you you go into another one. Okay. So how I teach is you use the breath as, um, what's the word that I'm trying to for? It helps you transition from pose to pose. So there's an unbroken thread throughout the whole class. Mm-hmm. So we do here, and then we do here, and then we do here. I like it because it creates more of an experience um, that I can just be enraptured in the whole thing versus a, sometimes I feel jarred when I'm like here in this pose and then I have to move to the next one. For sure. Yeah. Um, but then I also like restorative classes too, which are nice sometimes when you just want to chill out and hang out in the poses for a little while. Gotcha. So then mm-hmm. you're just spending more time in the poses then it's more stretchy, would you say? Or how would you describe the difference? I don't know. I hold a pose and things start shaking and burning, <laughs> so I don't know if stretching is the right word for it. Um... So, restorative classes, I feel like you might dig that. 
I really like Final Rest. That's probably one of my yes. favorite ones. <laughs> yes. So, restorative. Starfish. Nailed it. <laughs> Am I doing right? Yeah. Uh, restorative classes. Uh, the poses are um, much more accessible. And the reason that we use the word restorative is because it does encourage more of the focus and the emphasis drawn inwards. So the body can be at ease. You are then more able to focus on what's happening inside with the mind and releasing or drawing in whatever you need to, if that makes sense. Sort of. Yeah, yeah sure. Hmm. Um, have you heard of yin yoga? When you just said it. <laughs> I did five yeah. minutes ago. Yeah, about five right. minutes ago. Yeah. Uh, yin yoga is slightly different. Um, you're holding things for a very long time to release, especially like the hamstrings okay. or the hips and stuff like that, which is great because a lot of the time um, you get into a pose and then you're already on to the next one. And in order for the body to really release and get to that next place of openness, it's got to hang out there for a little bit. So that's what a restorative or a yin yoga, yin yoga in particular, would offer. Gotcha. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. So you talk about. Um, <laughs> go ahead. So you talk about um, on the website that I looked up a little bit, and I, I was looking at actually first Palm and Pine website. Mm -hmm. So we'll put a plug in for that um, in the show Thank notes you. and at the end. So I guess before going into that, what is Palm and Pine? Palm and Pine is the coolest company around. Just <laughs> kidding. Um, but not kidding. So we, it's myself and then two other girlfriends. And um, right now we focus on experiences pretty much. So we've done two retreats in the area. One at the Trumple Hotel and one at the Charmant. Um, and then also we have some cool apparel. Because Steph, one of the other gals, is an amazing designer. And says free spirit midwest roots is kind of our tagline hmm. which i think a lot of people can relate to oh for sure um but we are at a place we've been around we started in july we moved here so we started like six seven months ago um and we're at a place where a we're like we probably should have done a business plan six <laughs> or seven months ago but let's do that now and figuring out um how to create a business that is sustainable, how to add more value to people's lives, and um, how to work with them also being in Minneapolis and me being here, if that makes sense. So, so what are the retreats? What all happens? Uh, well, you're invited to come. I was saying, I have no idea anything yourself. about this. This is all that, other than... I'm sure Kelly... Having heard it. the yeah. Palm and Pine name, I have no idea what it's about. Yeah, so a retreat... Um, the importance of or significance of going on a trip. Have you gone camping or a vacation even? I'm not the world's best vacation. So. <laughs> okay, so you definitely are welcome to come on our retreat. Yeah, I, I have gone on them. Candidate. I don't necessarily do the whole vacation thing super well. Okay. I don't sit still very well. Okay. Anyway. Uh, um, don't necessarily have to sit still. I mean, it's the idea of removing yourself from your everyday life with the intention of getting clarity on, like, how you're really feeling when you unplug and then also um, getting clarity on, like, okay, my life is here. I want to be here. Like, what are my blocks and stuff that are coming mm -hmm. up? So, so that was kind of the focus of the one that we just had. Mm -hmm. It could also just be one to, like, rest and restore, eat good food, take naps, all that mm -hmm. stuff that being a human being, we don't really do as much anymore. Um, the first one at Trumple Hotel was really lovely because, have either of you been there? Yeah, I am not to that one. Oh, you got to go. You got to go. Yeah. It's like this cool old hotel right along the river of the Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And then you have Pro State Park right next to it as well. Okay. Um, I don't even know if cool does it justice. It, it doesn't. So I know. Cool. You're it like... So cool. Your reaction was not as good as <laughs> yeah. I was hoping right there. So I was like, I'm not doing this. Yeah. yeah. Um, Probably one of those you had to, had to be there things. So I just had to You, you have yeah. to go there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, it feels like you're in a remote place. Mm -hmm. And um, 
So they cleared out all the tables for us to practice yoga, looking straight out into the river. And then we did uh, a hike up Pro State Park. So you you can see the whole like driftless area too from there. It's okay. Really cool. yeah, cool. all right. <laughs> and then we did um, a walking meditation down in silence, uh, just to notice. Um, most of the time when we're with people, we want to connect. So we engage in conversation, which is great. But there's also value to being in each other's presence, but taking in everything else. So that's why we encourage some silent walking as well. Um, and then we had wine tasting, and we had some more restorative yoga and meditation. And that one, I think the beauty of it was that it was removed from civilization. Cell service does not even really work out mm -hmm. there, so people were forced to unplug. And um, at least for myself, I can say that I like am able to tap into an ease, a calm, but also this like aliveness that I may not um, get when I'm so stuck in my routine, if that makes sense. Hmm. Yeah. Sometimes it takes removing ourselves from like our normal bubble to be like, oh, fresh new eyes, fresh new perspective on things. And so even a day, day and a half can offer you a new lens to look at things. Yeah. So do you feel like that's, do you offer tips to carry that into the routine? Yeah. Because I yeah. feel like that would be the, where the challenge comes into play, like maybe... For sure. Two weeks down the road or something when you're yep. back in the grind. And that would be the difference between like a vacation and a retreat, I guess. It's because of vacation, you get in that lovely Mai Tai sipping <laughs> yeah. thing, everything's good, and then you come back and you're like, oh my God, emails, blah, blah. Um, so the idea is that you plant seeds, I guess, um, for my weird hippie way of saying it, over the weekend. And we dialogue about, okay, this is how you feel now, how does that translate into school schedules, work schedules, all of that. Um, for this last one, we're hopefully getting better every time we do a retreat. We um, gave everyone a workbook, and at the beginning of the workbook is a little inquiry is what we called it, where you um, just kind of take some time to observe how are you caring for your whole self. So not just physically, but mentally, emotionally, spiritually, relationships, professionally. So that you can contemplate it over the weekend, because I don't think, I think contemplation is very undervalued. And then there's a piece on breath work and different types of breath work that you can use. And then there was a section on yoga. So a morning routine, an evening routine, a midday work routine, one to relieve stress in the body. And then there was another section for meditation. And there is so many different types of meditation. Um, and then e under each one of these ones, it's like provides you with calm or balance or insight and creativity. So depending on how you're feeling that day, then you're like, okay, I'm going to do this one and do this breath work and then this yoga routine. And so that's what people left with and... I hope people are using it yeah. now. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So is it just you then and your partners? or? Uh, right who's... now, the hope is to make um, more experiences and widening the audience and having conversations and retreats with other people that are in wellness. So Erica... And I are talking about doing one in May, which should be great because she definitely has a skill set that I don't have that has to do with everything that's wonderful about being pregnant before and after, just the whole pelvic region, um, offering that. And then I can offer in some mindset stuff and meditation. So collaboration so that people can decide and hear different perspectives and take in what they want. I think that's important in life to hear from different teachers, not just one. Very important. Yeah. You can see that. So for these other retreats, were your partners present as well? Yep. <clears throat> Tracy was there. So Tracy um, has her MFT. She's a marriage and family therapist. Yeah. Wow. Um, mental health guru, for sure. <laughs> Probably has way more yoga certifications than I do as well. 
Um, she has her 500 hour yoga therapy. She has certifications in Ayurveda and all that stuff. So she's done both of them with me. She's a cute little nugget. <laughs> I enjoy her a lot. Um, and then Steph was there at her second one, and she is the one that makes palm and pie look as cool as it does. So it's she good has to have those people for sure. I know, yeah. Um, and she has worked with a lot of other startup companies. Um, and when I start getting off into like big picture creative ideas, she's very good about being like, and where's the structure behind that? Blah, blah. <laughs> So, um, Reeling you back in a little. Yes, yeah. yes. My husband's got that too. So. <laughs> so yeah, those two ladies are the ones I've been doing stuff with. But the hope is, again, to the more people that we have talking about this, you guys doing this, my hope is just like continuing to encourage a conversation. So, Or at least sparking curiosity in people that may have like been turned off by yoga because they had a hot and sweaty, devastating experience. <laughs> Um, and like, yeah, or just curiosity about like the next time they're in nature and being quiet and taking it in. Um, yeah. It's it's off on tangents sometimes. No, it's not it's all at good. All. So what do you find that are some of the biggest areas of people's lives that they need to work on? <clears throat> Or maybe some suggestions that you have mm -hmm. for a, a general listener. That's a big question. Teach us something, Kat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just waiting to go down the checklist. Like, yep, need that. Yep, need that. Yep. Uh, <laughs> oh, that one I'll do. Uh, maybe not. Yeah. Um, well, I'll start by saying everyone is different. So we all need different things. Are you talking about when it comes to just overall health and wellness or? Yeah, health and wellness or maybe like in the um, mindfulness realm, mm -hmm. just in, in your teachings mm -hmm. and uh, what you see, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, I would say a little, coming from my own experience, um, getting people more connected to themselves. And that it's only getting more challenging with our cell phones, with our computers, with TV to always have an external focus 99% of the time. Yeah? Oh, yeah. So, what about all this stuff? There's like so much happening. And so, yoga, this is why most time in my classes I've started asking people to close their eyes. Because even when we're moving, that can be meditation in motion and encouraging people to keep the focus inwards, get to know their bodies intimately, how it feels to have both feet on the ground, arms open, glutes engaged, all of that. Um, so awareness, I guess, is another piece of it. But um, actually, awareness is a good word. Because once people are aware of like how it feels, and in yoga, again, that introspective nature is one of the most beautiful things about it. Then you start to like be aware of other things like, oh, when I watch a shitty TV show, how does that? I'm aware of like how then my, my mind is reacting to it or the conversations that I'm choosing to have afterwards. Mm -hmm. Or like the food that I'm putting in. I loved Chinese food in high school and college, <laughs> for sure. Like Kung Pao chicken. Mm. But <laughs> now, for better or worse, I'm aware of, okay, that was like instant gratification, tastes delicious, but now I feel like crap and connecting A and B together and making a conscious choice. Like, I like it, but I also don't want to do that to my body. But I still will taste Kung Pao chicken every once in a while. <laughs> Do it sure. selectively when I know I don't want to be productive afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Because I love Kung Pao chicken too. Oh, uh, yeah. So or General's chicken too. General Sal's chicken? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pizza. All the things. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All the things that taste good. <coughs> yep. I'll save it for a couple times. Keep it good the rest. I'll go. I'll, so I want to carry on this conversation yeah. too. But the more that I started listening to like ritual podcasts and other stuff like that, have you guys listened to them? Uh, I have not listened to that one. Say it again. Ritual. No. Heard of it, haven't listened to it. He is um, 
an Ironman athlete, and then some, and he's all plant based. Okay. But on, one of those guys. yeah. Yeah, I'm impressed with them. <laughs> and in it, he just um, <clears throat> excuse me. One of the episodes was a doctor, and they were talking about the same thing of like people connecting to themselves becoming aware, body intelligence being something that's valued just as much as your IQ or um, your emotional intelligence. So that because how it's set up right now is we're told to look to outside resources for our health and wellness. When really, if we started looking inside and being more aware and caring for ourselves, like our bodies intuitively know things. We just get caught up in our heads and in external things that we just don't listen to it. That's my woo-woo theory for you. Comes but it's not the, woo-woo. Comes back to the awareness then. Yes. I like it. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> no, I agree with you. I think the hardest part is just figuring that out because it's going to take the time and the trial and the error to do it. And yep. In the world of instant gratification. I know. That sucks. Yeah. Because people just don't want to do it. For sure. You have to go against the grain. I mean, that was part of the inspiration, too, for our free spirit Midwest roots is because a free spirit is someone that doesn't do what everyone else does. Um, they do what they know to be true for mm-hmm. them. And so I was planting the seeds again. like it. Yeah. We talk a lot about just finding the thing that works for you as well, or you can't just get a prescription. Yeah. Because it's not going to work. Even if it is to get more internal and whatnot or aware, it doesn't work for everybody the same way. Correct. And we're multi. Just has everything. More multifaceted. So you got bodies. You may need chiropractic work, but you also may need to see like a physical therapist. Mm-hmm. You may need yoga, but you may also need like cardio. Like yeah, you do got to figure out what works for you. Balance is good too. Yes. Yeah, for sure. One hundred percent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What do you got, Joel? Uh, well, this was mainly you. So. <laughs> uh, I guess one of the ones is like, what are some of the major like mistakes you would see people like jumping into a hot yoga session for their first one ever? Like, what do you see when they first get started with it? Um, that's a great question. I mean. Uh, Alignment is definitely a big thing. Um, Also, we're a very competitive culture. So if you're holding plank, I'm going to freaking hold plank too then, (laughs) even though I don't have the shoulder stability to do so and my belly is sagging. So, yeah, that would be one of the biggest things is encouraging students that um, while there is such a benefit to being in a community space and practicing with other people. It is all about you. All about what's happening in the four corners of your mat. And again, that's closing the eyes, getting into feeling your body and the alignment that you should be having. And there is no competition because we're all at different places in our path. Um, Yoga and life, there's a lot of metaphors back and forth. For sure. Yeah. Um, So I'd say cut out the competition and the ego. Um, Also, communicate with the teacher. Uh, Maybe if it is your first class, let the teacher know so that they could spend a little time with you at the beginning, just reviewing some of the more basic poses that they're going through, or ask questions afterwards. Because it only supports you to get more information as you're understanding things and learning things. Um, but chaturanga is like, so the high to low plank, then the upward facing dog series. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Through it. Yeah. yeah. That, that one's hard to watch sometimes. <laughs> so that's why I've started taking some of it out to just focus on the basics first. It's probably hard. I think my really. down dog is about the most atrocious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We can work on it's that It's more afterwards. like just like there's segments to it, not just two lines. So. Well, it's my mantra that I've been using for class this week is what you practice, you become. So if you want to practice down dog on a consistent basis, you will become a down ass dog. <laughs> I guess this is what I would <laughs> say with that. And you'll have that nice shape that you're talking about. 
There you go. You balance out your your 500 pound squat. Yeah. Right. Oh, so I got some tight hamstrings and calves. I got wanna... some tight about everything. About everything. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's probably challenging. When and as you're... I do as I say, and as I do, kind of thing, because <laughs> I could probably fix it, but I don't. Anyway, there's only so much time in a day. Yeah. Right. Do you do CrossFit or no? What do you? I am currently training under a power lifter that way. Oh. No, just because I ran a half marathon this summer and. It was the first and only, and decided to just go to the opposite end of the spectrum, and have just been doing that for the last six months ish. Yeah, six it's months. It's been that long, already. Yeah. yeah. So dabbling in a little bit of everything. Just I dig that. Switching it up, you know, yeah. Yeah. Because then I get either too broken from doing that because it hurts too much. I'll switch back over to what our football guys do, just to. Be more well-rounded would probably be a good way to say it. So. Oh, you always preach being a jack of all trades. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that I do thing. CrossFit, though. I don't know if I... I do a version of it. I don't know if I would dive all in. Jump all in. Yeah. It's got to be hard, like you say, when you look at how atrocious some of the forms are. If there's like 12 people in front of you and everybody is pretty sucky at it, it's like, where do you even... <laughs> All right, stop everything. We're just going to back just it up. Just lay down and all yeah. take naps. <laughs> um, everybody would do good. Yeah. You do have to, but I think it's with any teaching modality, is you have to learn to teach within the bookends, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and just get very good at looking at bodies as to, okay, I'm not going to be able to help you with everything that's going on, but what are three cues that I could give to you and everyone else that would at least help you feel a little bit more ease and strength in the body? Yeah, I've heard that from a lot of people. It's like finding that keystone thing that instead of changing 12 things, you can change one or two, and because of that, you're going to change all of those things because you found the thing that holds the key to it. And I think that's when you get really, really good at what you do is when you can figure out where those are. Oh, yeah. It's more, much more efficient. Right, yeah. Well, and I feel like that in practice, even. Like, you could probably spin your wheels through several appointments going after all these other ripple effect, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. symptoms or something, as opposed to maybe finding that one big one that's going to take care of everything else. Well, as simple as putting your head and neck into the right spot, and then all of a sudden your back doesn't hurt anymore, or when you're doing certain lifts and it doesn't hurt anymore. I've had that with guys. Yeah, I just changed where my head was and it felt great. That's all you need to do. Think about that all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of readdressing the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And the cues are important as well. I'm sure you probably see this. um, But for me, like, if it's not connecting with a patient or, like, if they're not getting it or, like, I don't know, instead of putting it on them and being like, oh, that's just their fault because they're not getting it, it's me because I'm not getting it across to them. So I have to find a better way, I guess. And I could see that with you of maybe how to cue something different or finding that best way to to phrase it or I don't know. I just throw blocks at people instead if they don't (laughs) get it. Why can't you figure this out? Yeah, no. Um, contact yoga. Start something. Learn in a hurry. And then no one came back to our class. <laughs> uh, yes. Back to your original thing. Having a wide vocabulary is very helpful. Because um, ideally you are talking someone through it. But if they're just not getting it. Playing with different word variations. Um, but also being able to like give hands on assist sometimes mm-hmm. too. It just allows people to like feel exactly what you are asking right. of them. It's good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Feeling. Found that in those DNS classes. <laughs> yeah. They could tell you if you want to figure it out, but as soon as they just like one finger to that spot and then it hurt really, really bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a good hurt. Yeah, a good hurt. We have video evidence so <laughs> do we ever just like crying of you just things to, you never yeah. heard or never thought could burn like they burn. It looks so simple. Turn right? on. Yeah, it, it's just your body screaming at you. Just like different body. It's um, dynamic neuromuscular stabilization. So it's Got like it. a treatment technique, but uh, it ties very 
closely with yoga, actually. That whole movement actually, thing we did felt like a version of a yoga session. Yeah. Which so, I think it was, kind I, of. I think so. But. So just kind of, like you said, like with the alignment and everything, you know, like having correct positioning. Um, and so it's kind of taking that into like a treatment of, for example, Joel, I think, did you do the shoulder one as well? Did yeah. she have you do that? So she had because us my demonstrate um, the shoulder exercise and mm -hmm. uh, just kind of putting us in a position and having us maintain that. Um, like it was ridiculously hard and uh, it looks like, you know, why, why, why are you sweating? Like seriously, you know, yeah, yeah from the outside. But yeah, it, it's very effective in terms of treatment, I guess. So we did a seminar together, a couple of them, and it was along those lines, I guess. Um, I was, I get excited when I like see things that then relate to other things that I'm working on and you mm -hmm. like connect the dots. Mm -hmm. And um, one of them, I was doing this workshop on uh, resilience and in the body strength flexibility and endurance were like the three qualities of a body that is resilient. And I was like, That's why yoga is so great? Because it combines all of that. And um, I was like, okay, strength piece is easy to explain. Flexibility is easy to, to explain. Like, how can I explain endurance? And it was just that, that when you are holding a pose for a long time and your muscles are lengthened longer, don't they fatigue quicker, right? I, would. See, I was joking about the physiology lesson. In this thing. <laughs> no, I I'm pretty what you're sure. Saying, I did. It. I mean, you guys are definitely way more experts than I am in this. But from my reading, my understanding is that if a muscle is elongated, so like stretched mm -hmm. and active, it's gonna fatigue faster than if it's just like this. Right. So if it's held longer, sure. Yep. Oh yeah. Yep. And so the endurance to hold that and breathe with that. Yeah, I think, eh? no, I think that's, that ties exactly in with, yeah, the DNS, I would say. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's just different <clears throat> ways to train things, too. Like, you can get huge strength <clears throat> gains from just isometric holds. Yes. And eccentric things, there's all kinds of lifting stuff with mm -hmm. that and the whole training system based out of it. Yeah. And, and the yeah. flexibility, too. I was just reading something that talked about... Um, their, their big thing with flexibility is not just like a, a static, but it was like a contract or relax. Or like when you're stretching something and you're trying to get that extra range of motion, your body, if you're contracting that muscle, it, it can almost allow it to release a little bit more because mm -hmm. then it's not like trying to... It, it has that comfort of knowing like, okay, we can, we're, we're holding on a little bit, so then... Um, it's teaching it how to work in that new range of motion. Right. Yeah. And allowing it to relax within it too. So, yeah. It's kind of cool. It is cool. I think we, a few months ago, just for, I was probably geeking out about, the body <laughs> is so fascinating. Like, the more that I learn, the more that I'm like, I know nothing. Right. Um, it's, and it's incredible. Again, listen to your bodies. So important. It is incredible. It is. So where do you, when you talk about learning, what do you, where do you learn your knowledge? How do you know what you know? Like for your, your mindfulness, because I remember you saying when you were preparing for the, the retreat, you were doing a lot of um, study like on meditation and, and mindfulness and you were just kind of blown away about the amount of things you were finding out and even like research and everything. So mm -hmm. It's cool that science is now like catching up because yoga is an ancient, ancient practice. Um, but now science is starting to like back up and be like, oh, this does really work in here. So um, I read a lot of books. Audibles has been a game changer <laughs> for me because driving like between classes and stuff like that, or even just driving to the cities too sometimes. Um, I'm able to like gather so much more information and it's valuable information versus just listening to like the top 40 hits again or something like yeah. that. So Audible's book. Bieber not dropping knowledge. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I still dig the Bieber every once in a while for sure. Um, but those and um, 
there's a lot of resources online. There's a lot of, like, you got to be a skeptic. I mean, there's a lot of bad resources, too, online, but there's a lot of good ones as well, so just checking the resources. Talking to other teachers. Um, the other teachers here are fantastic. Harrison, who also teaches here, even though he has a fitness background, like, we're still talking about the body, and there's things that I can get from him. There's two physical therapists that work here. Um, so I just try to, like, suck in a little bit from everyone that I can learn from. Very cool. We're actually talking to Harrison a week from today, I think. I think so. Yeah. Cool. He's yeah, a cool I'm kid. I'm excited. Yeah. He's a very cool Heard a lot kid. of good things about him. I've never met him, actually, so. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure that'll be a fruitful conversation. Yeah. His vocabulary is, like, way better than mine. I'm not so. even going to lie. When he responded to my email, I had to look up, like, two words. <laughs> I was like, seriously? This is just, like, it was, like, two sentences. I know. Uh, it was, I know. It was funny. <laughs> he That's is a good writer. Say. Yeah. <laughs> hmm Did you get that experience with him? Did you, like, no, no, we didn't. It didn't. Did setting, you know those just have words? A big the setting yeah, didn't yeah. well. The setting didn't allow for those types <laughs> of things to come rolling through. But yeah, I'll be curious on that one for sure. Yeah. I'm excited. That's a cool kid. Um, but yeah, I'd say that's where. And again, I would go back to. I do feel very fortunate fortunate and everything happens for a reason that being able to be in San Diego and just immersed in so many different teachers who have been practicing for teaching for like 25 plus years um I wasn't getting that when I was living in Wausau shockingly yeah. enough <laughs> so it's been cool to bring some of that here to the area too because I do feel like sometimes my teaching is a little bit different than other people's um but I think you know, the more that, maybe you guys can speak to this too, what my teaching style or what I'm sharing, whether what I'm learning, um, it's just also a reflection of who I am and the experiences that I have. So taking all of that in, I guess I totally derailed your question, hmm. but that's okay. Yeah. So what is your background of getting into health and wellness? We kind of mentioned it a little bit before we started, so mm -hmm. can you give us sure. the background story, or how, how did you get to be so passionate about uh, everything that you are? Yeah. <clears throat> um, okay, remind me to tell you the funny story, too, about it. Good deal. Um, so when I was younger, high school, I was a bit of a wild child. <laughs> And gave my mom a run for her money. I love her dearly. And the fact that she still loves me. <laughs> and um, it was just like partying and stuff in high school and just being dumb. And uh, my senior summer going into college, my body broke out with like all these dots over my body. And of course, I was like, oh my God, what is this? I have cancer. Like what's happening going on? Um, and I had to go to three or four different doctors to figure it out. And they were like anywhere from like this big to like this big all over. And I found out that I have psoriasis and psoriasis is an autoimmune disease. And I did not even know what that meant at the time. And it means basically that your body is fighting against itself. And specifically with psoriasis, it means that um, I was producing skin cells too fast. Like, the body thought that it had to, inflammation is a big part of it, diet will go into all that. But it was just producing um, skin cells so fast that it would get to the top and then it would layer up and then that that's what creates that psoriasis looking patch. And so, um, I first started getting a steroid treatment. They give you like creams and stuff to put on your body and it's all topical stuff. And that did help, but it was still very present. And then I got to go tanning at the hospital, which I thought was pretty cool. Oh, that insurance yeah. was paid God, for tanning. They'll make money on anything, yeah. won't they? Yeah. Jeez. So phototherapy <laughs> was a part of it. Um, and then my mom, who has been an inspiration for sure about health and wellness and mindfulness, had me on like 50 vitamins a day to try to cure this. Literally, I looked like a drug peddler of vitamins <laughs> in college because I had an entire drawer filled with it. Um, and that stuff helped. 
And it also got me curious about, okay, I can't just put whatever I want in my body and expect that it's not going to have an impact on me. Um, Chinese chicken, sounds good, <laughs> yeah. but it has an impact on me. So that's kind of what sparked my curiosity about what are the things and choices that I'm making in my everyday life that are impacting my health and well-being from the inside out. And um, it, it, that's when I started to think about it. I definitely still enjoyed college and had like a good time and all that stuff. But then once I graduated college, um, same place as a lot of people, I imagine, just like unsure of what I was going to do in life, how I was going to make money, blah, 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 and develop some anxiety. And then I also moved to Minneapolis at that same time and started practicing at Core Power. And I noticed how every time I left class, I just felt lighter and calmer and more at ease. And while I did play sports throughout my childhood, I was never like the best person on the team. It was more like a social, let's have fun kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I felt really strong and good in my practice in like a way that I hadn't before in building body awareness. And um, <laughs> it was funny because then it started to be like Luke, Luke would be like, I think you need to go to yoga now and then we'll talk afterwards. <laughs> and then I would also. So it just, it helped me feel better and more at ease as to who I was. And then the more I practiced yoga, the more I started to be aware of my body, which then made me aware of what I was eating, taking better care of myself. And it just like sparked this whole revolution, evolution thing, if you will. And so I feel passionate about sharing that because I'm like, it's all within us. And people get really down on themselves um, and spend a lot of money on things that don't actually give them results. And I will say that yoga has, I was never a religious person, maybe spiritual, but not really. Um, it has connected me to a deeper experience of life than I ever had before. And when I say deeper, I would say the appreciation for life. Sometimes I get emotional and I start thinking about it and talk about it. It's pretty cool. It's really cool. It it's is. It's like a, a, you hear about negative snowball effect. It was almost sounds like a positive mm -hmm. snowball effect for exactly. you. Exactly. It's really exactly. neat. Should so, oh, that's a good idea. I have to share the funny yeah. story. Yeah, sure. we okay. That one. <laughs> so I was telling my friend Nikki uh, on Tuesday that I was doing this and I was like, they want me to talk about psoriasis. Like, I can't remember, like I haven't talked about it for a while. She's like, well, how did you get rid of it? And I had to think about it a little bit because it was like over time and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And my phone must have like heard me talking about this or something. I swear that's a thing. Because <laughs> I Googled in meditation on that, YouTube and what came up was meditation for psoriasis. I was like, I didn't even know that was a thing. Click. <laughs> And so two things. One, there's one with John Kabat-Zinn. Have you heard of him? Mm -hmm. So he is basically the one that started the mindfulness revolution that we're on right now. Um, he's a doctor in Massachusetts. And um, he started the mindfulness-based stress reduction training. Is that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, which is great because it's in healthcare is where it should be. And... Um, it's just like a minute video of him and they were doing tests on psoriasis patients going into their tanning booth at um, the hospital and then comparing ones that were given a mantra or meditation to use while standing there compared to ones that weren't. And the ones that were using meditation mantra healed or like cleared themselves four times quicker. Damn. Wow. I know. That's crazy. Yeah. So I was like, maybe I was onto something. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so the other video that I clicked on was like this Indian dude, very much in India. And he was chatting about like how pranayama, which is like breath work, um, and yoga can help you heal yourself. And he was talking specifically about psoriasis and how a lot of people in India have psoriasis, which I did not know. Hmm. So I was kind of digging what he was putting out for a while and it was resonating with me. But then like 10, 15 minutes in, he started giving recommendations for what you should eat. And cow urine and cow dung were on the list. I was like, and I'm done. 
Thank you. You didn't go there? No. I didn't go there. <laughs> I, I know. See it I like well, to be open minded, but just because of how sacred cows are to us. Sure. Yes. Yeah. That I'm sure that. they had I was fortunate enough to go over to India on a trip and you just see cows walking through the street and they're sacred. The traffic is ridiculous there, but if there's a cow in the way, traffic stops, they go around, like yeah. it just is what it is. So I could at least understand probably why he was saying that. Yeah. Those are things even mm-hmm. as bad as they sound. <laughs> I was just thinking about, could you imagine if our cows got wind of how they were treated yeah. over there? Yeah, <laughs> <Okay. laughs> right. Yeah, so. the happy Anyways. cows in California wouldn't realize that life wasn't as good as they <laughs> thought it was. I know. Hanging out on the beach. Yeah. Hmm. So that was That's my funny story that I yeah, yeah. Oh, funny. That's hilarious. Yeah. It's crazy how your phone just knew. I mean, Siri's been talking to me more, and I never use Siri. All of a sudden, she'll start chirping, and I have no idea why. And I saw some video about the Amazon Echo. As soon as you ask it if it works for the CIA, it just shuts off. A <laughs> little concerning, yeah. I'm just saying. Have you tried it? No, I have one at home. I really <laughs> should, yeah. It was, all it was was somebody asking, do you know what the CIA was? And it says, yeah, it spews back what it is, and it goes, do you work for the CIA? Turns off. Maybe, I'll let you know. Maybe Siri knows that you have an Echo and she doesn't want to be like replaced. You're right. Just mm-hmm. starting to edge her way back yeah. into your life. Just randomly turns on, which I'm sure is completely random. Interesting. Why not? No, yeah. I don't feel like it is, but it's kind of scary. Mm. Such is the world we live in these days. Which, were you, were one of you guys the ones that watched um, Feta? Yeah. So, you just said you just watched it, right? Yeah. yeah. Another funny but not funny story. Mm-hmm. Um, I watched that a few weeks ago, and I was just like all jazzed up about it. Oh, yeah. That was the whole basis for the fitness stuff well, and nutrition stuff we talk about off air. Yeah. But, yeah. And um, I already knew that sugar was bad. I just didn't know how much it was like involved with government and agriculture. politics and everything. Yeah, yeah. and the schools. Anyways, um, so one of my clients, she, I shared it with her and I was like, would you ever be willing to do like a little sugar detox, leave the processed food out and just focus on real food for a week? And so her and I have both been doing it since Monday. And uh, today she was like, oh my gosh. I went to go put barbecue on my chicken and then I pulled it away and I saw 16 grams of sugar. And then she was like, oh my gosh, I was at the grocery store and um, the yogurt with the fruit, you know, Mm -hmm. it's like 100 calories. So telling people this is a healthy option for you. Right. Then she's like, and it has a crap ton of sugar. It has a crap ton of sugar in it. There's and she was like, I couldn't believe it. She's like, I am mad now. <laughs> and I was like, you're good. Yeah. Yeah, that opening scene where it's like the family who's trying to eat healthy and getting the low-fat cereals and yeah. this, that, and the other thing. And it's just been spewed that that's the way to go. And yeah. it's, yeah, incredible and sad at the it's same time. It's super sad. Which because is what, people... I think what gets me is it's just like, oh. You just want to reach out and be like, can we just, I just want to help. Like, I no know. charge, don't want to make any money off of you. I got a job, just, yeah. <laughs> can we please do this better? Exactly. So, it's kind of like, I don't know, I see our challenge as education is out there, the information's there, but how can we make it more accessible for right. great people? Yep. Um, it's hard yeah. for people because they want to, they want to do the right thing, like, like you were referencing, but... There's so much other information too. So, like, yeah, the information yeah. is out there, and but what's the correct information? Right, and you're getting all this other garbage from other places. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. So I would say body intelligence too, coming in. For sure. Yes. You got anything yeah. else, or you're, I think we kind of hit all the topics. I think we did. What's the mindfulness-based stress reduction? So, are you doing? further um, education into that or I would love to be trained to like be able to train other people with that so I worked at the University of Minnesota for a little bit after college for about a year and um, 
one, they have amazing benefits at the university. <laughs> I don't know what UWL is like, but um, this was Apparently also their like, retirement system is really good. I, that I've heard. All right. Not, close enough next, to know anything about it. Yeah. I'll tell you after my five years when I can actually keep all of it that I, how good it really is. Oh, okay. Good to know. I'll ask again. <laughs> um, but one of the benefits was like you get a discount on classes. And so they offered the MBSR training, so mindfulness-based stress reduction. But my insurance also like covered it too. Sweet. So I got, I don't know, I was like win-win. Um, so I took that at the University of Minnesota and... I think that was before I did my teacher training. Yeah, it was before. And so it's eight weeks. And, you know, there were people in there with a little... I, I felt almost bad because I was there because of, like, some anxiety that I said that I had before and some other stuff. But there were people that had, like, lost husbands and lost siblings, kids, gone through cancer and... Um, you know, I don't think we're always given the toolkit to know how to handle these things in life. And that's basically what this course helps you do, is to become more mindful as to what are the thoughts, not, not attaching to them, um, but so that you can see them and observe them. And she offers, like, Tai Chi is a part of it, yoga is a part of it, offering little samplings of things so people can find what works for them. It was a great program, the instructor was really great. So at some point, Sounds I would like love to go and get trained so that I can offer that cool. eight-week course here, too. I think so there are a few huge. places that do around here. Oh, are there? Like, I want to say Gunderson and Mayo might. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Good to be aware of it. Yeah, I could see the benefit for many different things. Yep. I mean, literally everybody could probably benefit from it. Yep. I mean, Yeah. The fact that, like, stress reduction, like, we mm -hmm. all have stress yeah. to some degree and don't know how to handle it a lot of times or handle it in very bad ways. Oh, and God. stress, I think, is a lot of, a lot of underlying issues Yep. for maybe symptoms that people have, and it's, it all comes back to that. But how do mm -hmm. you measure it? You can't really say, oh, you're at a 89 on the stress scale or something, you know? So, yeah. it's tough. Exactly. It's not like you're weighing yourself where, yeah, you have a number to compare with your weight versus like the amount of stress. It's qualitative versus quantitative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's something that we all suffer with. So, um, yeah, MBSR is great. If you have an opportunity to sign up for it, please do. Um, John Cabotson, he's the one, the doctor that I was talking about earlier, mm -hmm. he's the one that created that. And he has a center out in Massachusetts. Um, but I think there's other people, too, that can train trainers. Yeah. You have to talk to my employer. <laughs> Get it. You want to go into the, the questions? Sure. We hit most of the others, right? I think so. Anything else you want to talk about that we didn't cover? Um, Major topics? Palm and Pine is great. Join us on our retreat. Yoga is the bomb dot com. <laughs> um, I would say that would just be my one invitation. Um, I definitely think there are things for everyone. My husband's thing is CrossFit, as so much as I love to get him into yoga sometimes. Um, but even if you had like a bad experience, one of my great teachers said it's like dating. Like just because you had a bad date don't write off dating completely. Like, try out other types, mm -hmm. try out different teachers, um, because the benefits are numerous. And, um, yeah, that that's my plug for yoga. Even if it's not me, there's a lot of great teachers in the area. For sure. And do that. Yeah, and online resources. But um, And don't undervalue privates are sometimes good too just to get the alignment that we were talking about sure. or talking with your teacher too is great Makes sense. Good to see so. that. and awareness yes awareness yes okay that's my plug Perfect. so what is something that you believe that maybe others may not um, loaded in this whole conversation <laughs> yeah. I feel like I'm gonna it, keep it it doesn't even have to yeah pertain to this it can be totally off the wall. Like, yeah, I um, know. I know my answer. Spaghetti girls on trees or something. 
That would be delicious. Um, I think corgis are the cutest dogs ever, and their butts are my favorite thing. <laughs> I could, I could understand. So I strongly believe that corgis are the cutest dogs. There you Other go. people may not believe that. Is that what kind of dogs you have then? I have one corgi, oh, and it's yeah. so cute. And then I have another dog. Her name is Miha. She's super cute too. She was a rescue from Tijuana. We adopted oh, wow. her like Dang. a week before we moved from San Diego because we're crazy, crazy yeah. people like that. But she's much better behaved than our corgi, and we get zero credit. She just came like that. She was fa- she was found in a cemetery and rescued by a couple, and then they brought her. She's illegal. <laughs> they brought her back across <laughs> the border and nursed her back to health. And we just happened to like be chatting with this couple at the grocery store, and she was there, and they couldn't care for her long term. And then they asked us, and we're like. I feel like when a puppy is presented to you in a grocery <laughs> store, you say yes. I'd probably have a lot more puppies I can, if I, I always followed that, that, that logic. But, that. that is crazy. That yeah. is pretty cool. So those are my two dogs. Nice. Yeah. If you had like three tips that you would give to people, what would they be? Um, practice gratitude daily, like before you get out of bed. Choose like three things. Um, meditate. And meditate does not have to be like sitting cross legged with like your eyes closed or anything like that. It could be going on a walk in nature by yourself. It could be laying down and just closing your eyes and being in a puddle of sweat for five minutes. <laughs> but keep that focus inwards. Like I said, we're usually having our external focus the external focus happening most of the time, which disconnects us from our body sometimes. So bring it in. Even five minutes can make a difference. And most people quit once it starts to get harder, like it's not working. Stay consistent. That's right when the magic starts to happen. Um, And then three. uh, Kick the Chinese food. Kick the Chinese food. That could be it. Um, kick Chinese food. I was gonna say adopt puppies because uh-huh. they're there you go. wonderful. Yeah, we can go. Joel with adopted that. a cat. It's pretty close. I was there. I don't <laughs> wouldn't say that I adopted a cat. So you adopted a cat. What's its name? Its name is Atticus, and thankfully Kelly was back home because then the cat annoys her all night and not me. So that's good. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Atticus. All the dog just slept there peacefully. <laughs> it was a thing of beauty. Oh, do you have a dog and a cat then? Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. I would argue a little bit that corgis, while I agree, basset hounds are mm. right up there too. So that, okay. was, that would be my argument back. Should we refine it to any midget legged dog? <laughs> yes, yeah, there you go. That just looks goofy when yes. they do anything active. Very daring. I can, yeah, I can live with that. There's someone in town around here that has a basset hound that is able to walk across the streets downtown without a leash. I've seen her and her dog a few times, and every time I just like wow. stare. Oh, uh, like, it can happen. No, no, I my dogs would like not that. handle. They'd no. be done. Mm-hmm. They would not be able to handle themselves. It'd be the time of their lives, though, exploring. Yeah, big fenced-in areas. <laughs> That's all that he gets off the leash for. Yeah. So yes. Did I answer all the questions? Oh, no, we got nope. more. Okay. Uh, Joel's going to have to ask them, though, because I always forget what they are. Top purchase that has had the most positive effect on your life for at or around or under $100? My yoga mat. Could have guessed that one was coming, but thought we'd throw it out there anyway. All right. Yoga mat and... Didn't even hesitate. What? You didn't even hesitate. Mat. Boom. Yoga mat offers so much. Yeah, I guess I'll just stick with that. And then you referenced books earlier. Got any good recommendations? I have so many recommendations. <laughs> um, the most impactful ones, though. The Untethered Soul is really good, which is funny because I listened to the one with Mandy, and she said that same oh, book. okay. I would yeah, agree. I was just saying, no, I've heard it. Yep. Heard of it. Haven't read it, but... It's good. It's quick, too. Okay. Um, I recommended it to my friend, though, and she was listening to Audibles, and she just wasn't into it. So maybe it's one where you actually want to get the paperback. Gotcha. Um, 
Some other ones that I like, Buddha's Brain has been really great. There's a lot of scientific language in that, so I don't recommend reading it right before bed, which is what I've been doing. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of great books on um, just happiness. Um, right now I'm listening to the happiness track. Um, any book with Gabrielle Bernstein's really great as well, if you're into like the universe and stuff like that. Mm. Mm. Um, I could say Deepak Chopra books are really good too. Have you heard of him? Yep. I've listened to a couple. I haven't actually read them paper, but I've listened to a few on Audible as well. I'm a big Audible fan as well. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. I feel like my IQ is just going up <laughs> since then. I really think so. I need hard copy and books. So I just do podcasts in the car. I don't, I don't think I could pay enough attention to an audio book to take it all in. I need the physical. Yes. For um, me personally. but okay. The Big Leap is another good one. Okay. I have heard of that one. I have not read it. He gave me like the best mantra that I've used. It's, I'm expanding in, now I can't remember. <laughs> I'm expanding <laughs> in abundance, love, and success. And I'm like, those are three mm. things, and so I've used that a lot. Um, but I hear you because I'll hear things. And then I'm like, I want to jot that down, but then I forget it. And then I have to listen to it again. But that's a great thing about audibles is you can listen For to sure. it again yeah. if you want to. It's tough when you're driving out there and you're like panicking. Like, do you pause it then and not listen to any more just so it's right there? Or? Siri, if that's yeah. when you get Siri to pop in. There you go. Okay. I wonder if you Always record ball. your notes. Yeah. If it's a heavy book, I'll have to like back 30 seconds quite often just to go yes. back. Right. That's what I'm reading right now. It's like, listen to a minute, back 30 seconds. What one are you listening to? Ah, uh, the Black Swan. Ah, yes. It's that a little, one. A little yeah. heavy at times, so. I That's couldn't even a, tell you anything about it anymore. I'd have to go back and read it, but I know I took expansive notes out of that you? one. I just heard, so there's a studio that, that Joe Rogan um, and some other guys started in Austin called Black Swan. Oh, And I really? recently, it's cool. Hmm. It's cool. Wow. Luke even, like, really dug it. <laughs> um, but I then just heard the term Black Swan. Uh, Nassim Tlaib, Tlaib. Yep. he's basically a stock market guy, he does a lot of trading, but he approaches it in just a completely different way than like how the entire market does, and so he's got that, um, oh boy, his other like books. Uh, yeah, he's yeah. got two more other ones, and it's all I just about taking a completely different look at everything and looking at it backwards, and so like they'll joke how they have like CNBC on, but they just have it on mute, like, because they don't pay any attention to what any of that stuff's going on. Mm. Cause they're always leveraging for like minimal downside with huge upside on things that aren't extreme bets. So there's almost no way they'll ever lose money and they've just figured it out. And Oh, I'm really blanking on his other ones now, but they're good. Yeah. I've heard they are. I've yeah. got them on, on the list to read, but I haven't gotten to those yet. But so, yeah, it's also not one to read before bed because you're going to sit there and you just, you, get, you almost, gone. when you read it, you've got to go back on a page and say, I don't know what he just said. i got to go back and redo it. So but It yeah. is cool, like you said, though, because I love looking at things differently or like yeah. people that talk about the free spirit out of the mainstream. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's good to learn, I mean, I should do a book like that, like things that aren't necessarily my strong suit, so... Definitely not mine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, because he writes The Black Swan, whatever the other ones are, son of a gun. Uh, but it's not, like, he references the stock market and all that stuff, but yeah. it's not about, like, how no. to trade. No, not it's at all. Is it, like, like just observing like, patterns and... It's, or, yeah, it's pretty much, at, yeah, like, anomalies and, and, yeah, things that are, like, Black Swan would be something that's... Like right. out of the like nine eleven or something yeah. like no one really could have probably predicted that, but um, you have all these people that try to predict everything and there's professions like economists. He basically, if you're an economist, you probably don't like him because he <laughs> he, he says their profession is, is pretty irrelevant. Oh. Um, so I apologize <laughs> if there's any uh, yeah. economists that like the show. But, uh, yeah, that's uh, yeah. his opinion. <laughs> yeah. Not ours. But, um, yeah, so basically, like, We're it's hard to like predict that. anything, really, like, the black swans, I guess. So, mm-hmm. and it skews the, the average so much because, I don't know, it's just, it's hard, it is hard to explain the book. It's just something, I guess, that's uh, yeah. Add very it to unique. The yeah. I have one credit on Audible right now, so. Do you? Yeah? 
Maybe I'll do that. That'd be a, a good addition to the lineup. Anti-fragile? I think I'm working through that one now. And then Fooled by Randomness. That's okay. the other one. That one's really good. I think you, if you like the Black Swan, Fooled by Randomness is really good. I wouldn't put it in my top five. But it's still but a good piece your interest. Yeah. Fool by Randomness is a good one. Speaking of happiness books, have you read The Happiness Advantage? Yes. That's a, that I was love with that Sean. Book. Acor. Yeah. yeah. I was yeah. trying to remember that. There's a lot of good stuff in that. Mm -hmm. And about like willpower. That's a book that got me interested in willpower. Okay. And that it is not an unlimited resource that we have. Um, and just making is those like. <laughs> healthier, happier decisions. You're fine. Um, like, easier for you. Like, the one where he gave an example of the guitar. Don't even remember now. It's been a few years. So, so he it... wanted to, like, learn how to play the guitar. And for a while, the guitar was, like, in the back bedroom in the closet. Mm -hmm. Oh. So he it was like, I'm never going to do that. So he brought the guitar, placed it right in front of his couch, so that it's always like that much easier to start that habit. So what are the barriers breaking them away, making it easier for some of the stuff? And the gratitude thing. Yeah, that's yeah. a good one. It got me pumped up. That's a, I like that book a lot. Tim uh, Ferriss does a lot with that, obviously, where he talks about like, yep. um, like Zuckerberg and Steve Jobs and how like they almost had their uniform. Because it's one less thing that they had to think about in the day. Oh. It wasn't a decision they had to make because they already knew mm -hmm. what they were going to wear. So then, like willpower, it's a finite resource, your ability to make decisions. Also a finite resource. So if you don't have to think what you're going to have for breakfast every morning or have to decide what you're yeah, going to you have for lunch. You can conserve the energy. You can conserve that <laughs> because it's just there. It's part of the routine. Which is laughing. I think my four-year-old has that figured out because yeah. he doesn't ever have to decide what underwear he's going to wear because he just doesn't. There you nice. go. <laughs> yeah. That's one way to do it. in. I dig it. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. Is that, um, that's all of them? No, there's one more. Oh, man. All right. Uh, if you can go back five to ten years and tell yourself something that you've picked up over the last five to ten years, what would that be and could you kind of place this or where you're at in life? That is such a great question. Um, I just think back to that high school version of myself that I was talking about. Mm -hmm. I think I just want to be like, don't be an idiot <laughs> in several ways. Um, appreciate your mama more. Nice. Mm. I'm gonna stick with that. Yeah. There you go. I like that one. Yep. You have to make sure mom listens now. I know. Give her mom, props. I love you. <laughs> She's probably still shocked that I turned out to be a decent human. <laughs> <laughs> At least so. you did, though, right? That's right. all that matters. That's what I tell her. So, in the scheme of things, all that trouble I put you through in high school, totally worth it. <laughs> there you go. Okay. And the last one is just anything else. Where can people find you? You've kind of plugged all the other stuff, but if you want to... Yeah. Socials or websites, whatever. We'll um, link it all up. There's palmandpineyoga.com. So that's where you can learn more about what we offer. We do do or I do one-on-one -on -one coaching with people too that... Um, a little bit different than other people in the fact that I do incorporate meditation and mindset as well as nutrition and yoga movement. Um... And then there's stuff about re retreats, and there's a blog, too, with other people's stories about how they've changed and adopted a more holistic, healthy lifestyle, which is cool, too. Um, and then, yeah, I'm on Facebook and Twitter, Kat Soper. And you can email me at kat at palmandpineyoga.com. Or good. just come to class, too. There you go. Yeah, that's even better. Do that one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thanks for chatting, guys. Yeah. It's good. Of course. All right. All right. Cool. That's it. That's it. Bye, world. <laughs>
Thank you for checking out this episode of Clinically Pressed. Go to clinicallypressed.com for full show notes and links to everything that was covered in this episode. While you're there, you have access to all of our episodes, insights, and shorts. You can find Clinically Pressed on YouTube and any podcast outlet. If you could give us a rating, thumbs up, or review on how we are doing, we would greatly appreciate it. To get more free content delivered to your inbox, sign up for the Total Athletic Therapy Newsletter. You'll get direct links to all new Clinically Pressed episodes, reviews on some of the latest research in health and performance, and links to related podcasts and other items meant to help you make the complicated simple and optimize performance. Thank you for listening and see you next episode.